Today, I'm going to synthesize the pale blue pigment, cerulean. To begin the synthesis, I need to make potassium stannate by boiling tin metal in a saturated potassium hydroxide solution. Technically, sodium hydroxide might be able to work as well, but the formula I found used potassium hydroxide. Dissolving tin in hydroxide takes an extremely long time, so while that's going on, I add a second metal, cobalt, to an Erlenmeyer flask. To dissolve the cobalt, I make a dilute nitric acid solution by adding a little bit of nitric acid to a lot of water. As the cobalt begins to dissolve, you can see a vivid red cobalt nitrate begin to form in the solution. I go ahead and heat this at the boiling point of water for about an hour, and the more and more cobalt nitrate that is produced, the darker the solution becomes until it's a completely opaque ruby color. Once all of the cobalt metal has dissolved to cobalt nitrate, I add some of it to a 500 milliliter beaker, followed by a good bit of water to dilute it. At this point, stirring is turned on, and I begin to add the potassium stannate that I made in the first step drop-wise. Upon this addition, you can immediately see several small blue flakes begin to precipitate out of solution. Now, what's happening here is that the cobalt nitrate is reacting with the potassium stannate to form a blue complex, which is insoluble in water. This blue complex is what we call cerulean. Now, an unfortunate byproduct of this reaction is cobalt hydroxide. And this is formed because the potassium stannate solution I synthesized in the first step is extremely alkaline. And I haven't been able to develop a method to produce pH neutral potassium stannate, and I haven't been able to find any online. From what I've been able to read online, this difficulty is a big reason that cerulean was such an expensive pigment for most of its history and remains extremely expensive to this day. Most of what you're going to find in the store marketed as cerulean is not chemically cerulean. In any case, at this point I add my solution to a coffee filter to get rid of the remaining cobalt nitrate. And I didn't show it on camera, but I did several rinsings with hydrochloric acid to dissolve the cobalt hydroxide. And if anyone was wondering, my favorite classical painting using this pigment is Claude Monet's The Grand Canal. In any case, once my pigment was cleaned and filtered, I transferred it to this crystallization dish to dry. And by the time it's done drying, it forms this nice blue powder. And as I usually do, I crush this up with linseed oil to demonstrate its use as a paint. Now today I wasn't feeling very creative, so there's not a lot going on here. I just wanted you guys to get a feel for what it looks like on paper. Um, unfortunately, it looks different on camera than in real life, almost greenish. In real life it was a much more vivid blue. Um, but yeah, that's all I got, and follow for more.